I have a scenario for you guys. You discover that there is a Discord server with an undesirable in targeting children. Do you A, report the server to authorities, B, find the owner of the Discord and expose them for harboring an undesirable, or C, do you go after a relatively unrelated moderator who happens to be a disabled woman, get her into a Discord call with dozens and dozens of people, and verbally assault her for four hours? If your name is Lyo Convoy, Hopeless Peaches, or any of the dozens upon dozens of others within the Senate call, the answer would be C. I'd like to make a couple of disclaimers before I begin the video. First, of course, not every single person involved within the Senate call was attacking Rosa, who is the moderator, the mentally disabled woman. Some of them were just popping in to find out what was going on and why there were so many people in a call. The second is, if you would like to view the call in its entire atrocity, I will link it down in the description below, and Omnia has made a video going over it in clips. I will not be using clips in this video because I am lazy and filled with rage and want to get to the point. The third is that while I will be talking about aspects of mental health and psychology, I am not an expert, I'm not a psychiatrist, psychologist, I am not a professional. I do have a psychology and criminology degree and I have worked with disabled individuals, but that does not make me an expert and any sources that I will be using will be linked down in the description. Let us make some introductions so we can decipher who is who within this video. Star Giant is the owner of the aforementioned offending Discord server. Nekoport is the undesirable within that Discord server. Rosa Ramsey is a moderator in that Discord server. On the other side is Lyo Convoy who owns the Senate Discord server wherein this call with Rosa takes place. Hopeless Peaches is another creator who participated in the Rosa call. There are obviously many many others who did, but I don't care enough to name them. I'll give a little bit of context about Rosa before we continue. Rosa is a mentally disabled woman in her 30s. She has autism, epilepsy, and clearly some other types of learning difficulties. She lives at home with her mother and others who act as her caregivers. She is guilty of inaction, not doing anything about Nekopor during the situation. On the other side of the coin, she was not fit to have the moderator role to begin with. She should have not had it. It is still unclear whether or not she had the ability to invite or ban people from that server, however. This is to say that no, Rosa is not completely innocent. However, the four hour call and the contents of it is completely unacceptable behaviour. It's completely taking everything out of proportion. It is unproductive and frankly abusive. And now the main chunk of this video, specific parts that I take issue with, and there are a lot, I will not be able to get into every single instance of obscenity within this video, but I will try. The first is a continuous theme throughout the entire call, which is people pressing Rosa when she is silent. They know that she has autism, they know that she may have issues processing information, and might not understand exactly what she is being asked. They continuously affirmed her that they are providing this information and these questions in the most simplified manner, but they are quite simply not. They take her silence as her refusing to answer, when in reality you're talking to somebody who is mentally disabled and may have issues with processing information and communicating their thoughts. You are not asking things in the most simplified manner, you are not making this easy for her, as you repeatedly attempt to affirm throughout this entire call. Lyo in particular is egregious with his ridiculous analogies, which complicate the matter. You do not know how to talk to somebody like this. It is clear, none of you are qualified to talk to somebody like this. In fact, this call on its premise, without any of the abuse that you subject Rosa to, is absolutely unnecessary because you were unprepared and you do not know how to communicate to somebody who has mental health issues of this degree. There's constant references to her being stupid because of this, like she doesn't know how to talk. No, in reality, you are not communicating to somebody who has mental, developmental and neurological problems in an appropriate manner. They belittle her for this, they call her stupid. At one point, Hopeless Peaches continuously asks how old Rosa is. Peaches knows that she's in her 30s, there's no reason for this. 
It is only to belittle Rosa. What, you're 13, you can't have a conversation with me? You can't talk about what's gone on? Rosa's age is used against her frequently throughout this entire call. And again, her biological age is not relevant. She is mentally, developmentally, and neurologically disabled. I'm in my 20s and I know better than you. That's super nice, but do you happen to be all of the things I've just said? There are various conditions that may impact a person to act in contradiction to their chronological and biological age. Global developmental delay, dementia and Alzheimer's. Oh, and autism. They also bring up the fact that she still lives with her mother in her 30s as some sort of own against her. Ignoring the fact that her mother is her carer and she needs a carer to function on a daily basis, which is one of the major red flags that this call should have never happened to begin with. And on another note, making fun of someone for living at home in their 30s, it simply reeks of being in a massive ignorant bubble on a cultural and economic level. Culturally speaking, it's normal in many places in the world to live with your parents well into adulthood, sometimes marrying and then remaining in your parents' home. As well as this, we're currently in a cost of living crisis. People simply can't afford to move out like they used to. This line of degradation towards Rosa is not only ableist, but when applied to others is extremely ignorant and privileged. Another point of contention for me is Rosa's memory, but not Rosa's memory in and of itself. Rosa has epilepsy and someone pops in to say, well, I have friends who have seizures one of them is stress seizures and it doesn't affect their memory in the way that you say yours affects you. Hey, Captain Condescension, you having friends with seizures doesn't even make you vaguely knowledgeable about seizures. There are four main types of seizure and a further 30 plus more reported. Seizures vary drastically. Stress seizures are not a type of seizure, it refers to causation. Your friend has seizures that are caused or brought on by stress. It doesn't denote the type of seizures they have, nor does it dictate the symptoms they may experience before, during and after a seizure. The conversation slash seizures state, many people with epilepsy also experience memory problems. Patients often experience retrograde amnesia, where they cannot remember what happened immediately before their seizure. And the Epilepsy Society says, if you have lots of seizures, particularly in a short space of time, your memory can be disrupted for a longer period of time. This may happen if the brain doesn't have enough time to recover fully between seizures. We don't know how often Rosa has seizures. She could have seizures on a daily, weekly, monthly, or even yearly basis. And depending on the frequency of that, she very well could have memory issues. The ableism goes even further when Lyo makes the statement that he doesn't believe that Rosa should be allowed to breed. This is based off what he perceives to be Rosa's intellectual inferiority. This is where the vapidness of the conversation truly begins to show its colours, because Lyo has inadvertently supported eugenics. Eugenics is the philosophical notion that humanity should be selectively breeding to eliminate undesirable traits from the species, typically leaning to be pro-white, pro-neurotypical. Eugenics was the blueprint of the German government when they tried to take over the world in the 1930s and 1940s, and I believe you know what I'm referring to. Do I think that Laia was a eugenicist? No. I think he's getting so worked up in order to play the part of the enraged vigilante that he's inadvertently spewing fascist ideology at a vulnerable woman. Imagine getting yourself so worked up to attack this mentally ill woman that you end up paraphrasing rhetoric from the Third Reich. And it isn't just the ageism coupled alongside copious amounts of ableism. Peaches decides to come in full force with the sexism. These people are using every single opportunity to use slurs towards Rosa where applicable. I can only imagine what would have happened if she happened to be a person of colour. It is not beyond these people to start using racial slurs, and I hold that truly to my heart. If you can use the R slur, if you can tell a mentally disabled woman that she shouldn't breed based on her mental disabilities, there's not really much of a line you can cross from there on, is there? Peaches decides in this call that they will use sexist slurs in between demanding to Rosa that they should speak to her mother, aka her carer. For what reason? I do not know. If only to intimidate Rosa, which is what this entire call has been. And despite all the vitriol that you will hear if you listen to this call, the most disturbing part to me is when Peaches 
periodically stops the call to check in on Rosa, to ask how she's doing. They are well aware that throughout this call, Rosa is being pushed and pushed and has cried, but continue to ask her if she's doing all right. Not out of genuine concern for Rosa, but because they want her to confirm that they are not doing well. That is sadistic. They want Rosa to admit that she's in a very dark place, that she's not doing well, that she's guilty, that she's breaking. Don't quote me on this in case I'm wrong, but I'm fairly sure that certain military organizations will train their soldiers in hostage interrogation techniques. And this might be one of them because it's psychological torment. To halt the torment, to check in on the victim of the torment so that the tormentor can get the gratification of knowing what they are doing is working. Peaches is well aware of what they're doing when they stop and ask these questions, and it's one of the sickest parts of this call, in my opinion. There is more, so, so much more. From Lyo and Peaches both invalidating the mental health of Rosa by saying she doesn't have any trauma or PTSD, to demands that Rosa talk about the minors in her own family, which have nothing to do with this. The only salvation and saving grace that this call has is that three people come into the call and say how unnecessary it is. I find it hard to detect who these are because I'm super bad with voices and the avatars all over the screen are confusing me, but I believe these people are Ponda Sprocket, Harley TBS and Scritis. I had the pleasure of meeting all three when I went to LA and they are lovely individuals and in this case they were the only sane individuals, Ponda particularly pointing out how egregious this entire call was. And at the end of the call we find out the real reason for it, it wasn't about accountability and helping people change and grow. To quote one of the participants, it was hilarious. Yes. All of this, the four hours that Rosa endured and I, by proxy of having to listen to the call, endured, 90% of this entire ordeal was internet vigilantes LARPing as real authorities having a power trip. Deriving sadistic satisfaction from bullying a vulnerable individual for four hours under the guise of protecting children. Do not be mistaken. This had nothing to do with taking accountability, learning and growing, and protecting children. It was all just a laugh. It was funny. Something to pass the time, if you will. I'm going to speak directly to Lyo and Peaches. Children do not need you. What children need are accessibility to medical care, whether that be physical or mental, and reforms to the legal system so that they can seek justice against their perpetrators. Making exposed videos and taunting someone for several hours is not effective justice. This is something I've previously criticised other internet vigilantes for because you aren't actually fixing the problem. All you are doing is shifting the victimology of a perpetrator. If they are previously looking at victims online, but you make an exposed video and spook them and they turn their computer off without making sure that they are secured, all you have done is make them look for victims in real life. So congratulations, you've just made sure that they aren't online doing it, they're doing it in real life. Not only that, you are actively teaching survivors that it is acceptable to project all of their pain and hurt onto a person who is vaguely related to their case, but isn't the perpetrator. To Peaches specifically, you are understandably extremely insulted when anyone tries to bring up anything about your mental health or your own survivor story. That is valid. However, what you do to Rosa in this call is equally as invalidating. Not only do you co-sign and participate in rhetoric that is thrown at her, including ageism, ableism, and sexism, you also stop to check in and make sure that it's having an effect on her because you want it to. You are amused by and laugh at her panic and distress throughout the call. I have no words for that. Now directly to the survivors. In this scenario, you are the least accountable. You were manipulated and used by an undesirable. That is absolutely not your fault, and I sympathise and empathise also as a CSA survivor. Yet I fear that the support system that you've created alongside Lyo will be toxic for you. I understand that Rosa is somewhat complicit in what happened to you in regards to the undesirable remaining in the Discord. 
I do not fault you for harboring anything against her. I understand a statement she made about it being a year or years was insensitive. I know that must be invalidating to hear. But I would like to let you know it is not a reflection of you and your case, but it's also not a reflection of Rosa. She's in here for four hours, she's been on many different calls, and again, as I've stated many different times in this video, she is mentally disabled. She is not going to gain an understanding of the severity of the situation. She is not going to be able to process it. That is why she has a carer that lives at home with her. She is not a person that should have been a moderator, nor is she a person that should have been brought in on all of these calls. Lyo and co knew this. I fully believe they knew you weren't going to get any closure. They knew her behaviours, they knew her disabilities, and yet they brought her in. The reasoning being is because they wanted a human punching bag to let off steam with, and they used you and your situation as a shield and justification to do so. That is my opinion and my belief. I genuinely and sincerely hope that you do get to heal, that you have access to the medical care that you need, that you have a healthy support system. Do not co-sign the targeting of vulnerable individuals. It won't help you, and it won't make you a better and healthier person. That's all I have for you with this video. Again, I highly recommend you check out Omnia's videos because they will be covering this in more detail. If there is an update, I will make a video on it. But for now, I will see you in the next one. Bye.